So this is part two in this series of videos looking at this Allen & Heath Z24 audio mixer. In this video we're going to remove one of the mono channels and take a closer look at it. To remove the mono channels I'm just using an 11mm socket to remove all the retaining nuts around the pots. You've got to be careful doing this that you don't mark the desk itself or scrape the paint. Once you've removed all the retaining nuts there are two screws that hold in the fader and there are two T10 Torx screws that hold in the XLR jack. Now that we've removed everything from the front of the unit that holds the channel in, we can carefully turn the mixer over and remove the one remaining cable that's holding the channel in place from inside the machine. So every channel card inside the mixer is connected in parallel with this ribbon cable. The ribbon cable carries power, the pre-fader, the four auxiliary buses and the main left and right bus from one card to the next. To remove the channel card, all we have to do is very carefully pull this connector from the board, being very careful not to bend any pins, and then just lift the board straight out. There's nothing else connecting this board. And we can get our first look at the channel card. First glances, it's very simple layout. It's a single sided circuit board, through hole components on one side, surface mount components on the other side. But we'll take a closer look at it now. So here's our first close up look at this side of the board. We've got our Nutric XLR input jack and all these pots are high quality Alps pots. And the 100mm slider I believe is also from Alps. And this is the mute switch that's possibly the cause of the problem on some of the channels. Each mute switch has its own individual LED. Next to the mute switch was the pre-fade listen switch. Let's another look at these pots from the top. These pots of course form the, the gain, the EQ, the four auxiliary sends, pan left and right. The layout of the board seat basically follows the flow of the signal through the board from input through gain, EQ, the four auxiliary sends and these two jumpers here are actually an option that allow you to change the senders from pre-fade to post-fade. This isn't mentioned in the manual as far as I'm aware. Looking at the front side of the board again, that's the connector where the ribbon cable connects. And you can see that anything that's loose is held down with glue. And these seem to be high quality components. The capacitors are reasonably quality Jamicon capacitors. Like I said, the XLR was from Nutric and the pots are from Alps. Let's take a closer look now at the op amps that are used on this board. They are all TL072B from JRC. That's all for just now. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.